Hello there. Today I'm making a gluten-free chocolate sponge cake, which is light, airy, fluffy and moist. And definitely is going to compete with its glutinous cousin. The chocolate sponge cake is really the foundation for many of the fancy cream cakes. And if you know how to make the chocolate sponge cake, it is so much easier to make any kind of fancy cake. What makes it so light and fluffy is the egg white. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stiffen the egg white, which is really just beating the egg white till it becomes a white foamy mass. And the flour is just being folded underneath it. And this process makes the cake so fluffy. To get started, I need to get some eggs. Come on, Chicky, I just need a few eggs. The most challenging part about making a sponge cake is really about separating the egg yolks from the egg whites. And if this is all too messy for you, what you can do is there are egg separator tools which make it much much easier to separate it. This tool is almost like a strainer where you put your egg in and somehow the egg whites just strip away from the egg yolk. So this is really the tool my husband is using. And and this one. I'm a little bit more of a traditionalist so I'm going to do it the old fashioned way. So what I do is I crack the egg and put it upside down. Then I'm going to open the egg carefully and make sure the egg white can run over the edge of the one egg shell. And then I'm going to flip it into the other egg shell. And I'm going to continue this process until the egg yolk is separated from the egg white. I'm over the most challenging part of making a sponge cake. I succeeded to separate six egg yolks from the egg white. I'm going to add 190 grams of white sugar to the egg yolk. I'm going to add about 1 inch, which is around 2.5 centimeters of water in a pot and get it to a boiling point. When the water starts to boil and releases a lot of steam, I'm going to place the bowl with the egg yolk and the sugar on the top of it. That is what is called a double boiler. With my handheld mixer and the whisk attachment, I'm going to start blending now the egg yolk and the sugar. Within 3 to 5 minutes of continuous blending and whisking the egg yolk and the sugar, I can start to see how it forms a very foamy, light yellow batter. My batter is ready when I can see how the whisk marks remain in the batter. I'm going to remove now my batter from the double boiler. Check out how airy and fluffy the batter is. It's almost like marshmallow cream. I'm going to mix now my flour combo. And what is different with the sponge cake is that it takes teeny little measurement. And it's pretty easy to overshoot that. I have plenty of time put it into a big bowl, measured my flour to realize I added a few too many grams and then I'm trying to somehow fish the flour out. So what I started doing is I'm going to measure all my flour in a small cup first and then transfer it to a bigger bowl. So I have to measure 15 gram of sorghum flour, 25 gram of millet flour, 15 gram of white rice flour, 15 gram of sweet rice flour and 15 gram of tapioca flour. I'm also going to measure 50 gram of cacao powder or baking chocolate. I'm also going to add a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon and one eighth of a teaspoon of baking powder. I'm going to measure now 65 gram of butter and I'm going to melt it in a pot. I'm also going to measure 60 gram of vegetable oil. I prefer to use sunflower or rapeseed oil because they're flavorless. And I'm going to add the melted butter to the oil. With my hand mixer or my stand mixer, I'm going to whip the egg white. So what's really happening now is that I'm pushing air into the egg white molecules, which is forcing them to expand. And the longer I do it, it's starting to form like a white mass. And that is often referred to stiffening egg whites. I'm going to continue beating the egg whites until I reached a stiff peak. And you reach a stiff peak where the egg white starts to hold its own shape. I'm going to take now my marshmallow-like egg white and sugar batter. I'm going to add the egg whites to it and carefully fold under the egg whites. So what I'm doing is really with the spatula, I'm creating a rotating motion to fold under and combine the egg whites with the egg yolk and the sugar. With a fine mesh strainer, I'm going to add the cacao powder and the flour. And that helps to prevent big, huge flour clumps in the middle of the batter. I'm also adding now one and a half teaspoon of vanilla extract. With the same method, I'm going to fold under now the chocolate powder and the vanilla extract and the flour until all the ingredients are well combined. 
I'm gonna go ahead now and prepare my eight inch baking pan. I'm gonna put on the bottom of it a cake liner and then I'm gonna pour the batter into the baking pan. If I'm making a Swiss roll, I would pour the same batter into a 13 by nine inch baking sheet. I'm gonna bake now both of my sponge cakes in a preheated oven at 325 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius. I'm using here two different shapes of baking pans, so the baking time will vary. I'm gonna check on the baking sheet after 30 minutes while I'm gonna check on the route cake pan after 40 minutes if the cake is ready. To check if my cake is ready, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna poke it with my chopstick and see if it comes out clean. And if there's no better sticking to my chopsticks, then I know my cake is ready. You can do the same thing also with a fork. So after my cake is done, I'm gonna release it with a cake spatula from the cake pan. I'm gonna place now a cooling rack on the top of the baking pan and flip the cake onto the top of the cooling rack. And here's now my chocolate sponge cake. I'm gonna let it cool down before I'm gonna do anything else to it. The nice thing of baking in a baking sheet is I can just lift the finished cake out of the baking sheet and then again put it in a cooling rack and let it cool down. Now you know the foundation of many of the fancy cream cakes and that is either a vanilla or a chocolate sponge cake. And if you get fancier and fancier over time, you can make a hazelnut sponge cake or a pistachio sponge cake and then just make the appropriate filling. So there's no limit anymore to what you can create with gluten-free baking. It can be as delicious and even be better than the glutinous cousins. And next week, I'm gonna show you how to make the tart crust and the cookie bottom layer so you can finally make the black forest cake. I see you then. Oh, and before I forget it, if you enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel and check the bell for notifications for about any upcoming videos. I see you then, bye.